What's up, Final Cut Pro editors? My name is Jared Ewing. I'm here with another Final Cut Pro tip. Today's video, I want to talk about logos. I've been getting a lot of questions, emails, direct messages on Instagram, different places, where you've received a logo file, and you want to put this down in the corner of your video, but it's not a transparent logo, meaning it either has a black background or something else around it, and it just doesn't look that great. So hopefully these tips will help out and get you started in the right direction for fixing those logos and making your videos look a little bit better compared to what they look like right now. So to do this, I have three logo files on the desktop here. One of them is a JPEG, and I'm gonna use a quick look here just by hitting the space bar to preview this. And you'll notice this file is the logo with a black background, solid black background. So that's one of the files, and this is the most common that I see people getting and then having issues with. Above that, I have a Photoshop file, it's a .psd. If I hit the space bar, it looks very similar, has that black background. And then the last one above it is a PNG file, and if I hit the space bar again, it previews it. Only this one, you'll notice there's not a black background, it's actually a transparent background. And this is the file that we want to have. This works the best because you don't have to do anything. Just bring this in the Final Cut and the background's transparent. You can put it in the corner. So let's actually do this. Let me show you what this looks like in Final Cut. I'm gonna switch over here. I'm gonna shrink down my interface just to make this easier. And just to set you up, I have an empty Final Cut Pro library. There's nothing else in this library, just one empty event. So I'm gonna select all three of these files and just drag them onto that event and you can see all of them are compatible. They all come right into Final Cut, no issues there. And if I scrub across them, they all look you know, very similar. Obviously the dimensions, this one's a square one. You know, The dimensions are a little bit different. That's fine, that's not what we're dealing with. But now I'm gonna create a new project and I'm just gonna hit okay. I'm not gonna name this project, because it's just for a demo. However, name your projects. It's very important to keep things organized. So now I have an empty project on the bottom here. I'm gonna go into my titles and generator sidebar. I'm gonna grab a background. I'm just gonna grab this blobs background. And for this example, this blobs background is whatever video you are editing. I'm gonna hit Shift Z, Shift Z to fit that on the timeline down here. And then I'm gonna go back to my files here and just, I'm just gonna drag these on the timeline so you can see what these look like. So let's do this first one here, which is the logo. I'm just gonna see it's super large here, so I'm gonna use the transform, the scale here to shrink this down. And so this first one here is the Photoshop file. You can see it has a black background around the edges there, and not exactly what we want. So now I'm gonna go over and select the square one. This is the JPEG image, and you can see the same thing. I could shrink this one down, but it still has that black background. And then if I go and grab the PNG file, You'll notice this one does have transparency, so this actually looks great. I can go up to my view menu, I'll hit my title and action safe zones, and then I'm gonna shrink down the logo. I'm gonna use the transform tool to move this over into the corner. Maybe I wanna go even a little bit smaller than that. Looks pretty good here. And I can even take the opacity here, shrink down the opacity just to make it transparent. And I'm really, I'm done, right? There's nothing else I have to do with this. This is how you can get your logo or watermark, whatever you wanna put onto your video down there. And that's because it has transparency. So that transparency is really important. But what about these other files, right? This is our square one. How can we get this one to work? Or even the Photoshop file, how can we get this one to work? So with the Photoshop file, hopefully you are the one that made this in Photoshop and you can just go in there and disable that black background layer. And then when you export the file, you should be able to include transparency or an alpha channel. That's really what you wanna include. If you didn't create this Photoshop file, go to whoever did and ask them to send you another one with a transparent background or with an alpha channel. That's what that is also called. However, uh, that's something that if you're working with Photoshop files, you have the tools that tends to be a much easier process. If you don't have access to those files, you might not be able to, to get access to a broken up file where you can actually go in and, and remove all that. There's a couple tools built into Final Cut to help with this. The first one I'm gonna talk about is called Blend Modes. So if you select your clip, which in this case is the logo, not the background clip, you wanna make sure your logo is selected, you can go into the Video Inspector, 
and there's this compositing section that's usually at the top. And you'll see on the right side, we have a blend mode right now that's set to normal. And what this blend mode does, there's a whole bunch of them, you can see a whole list of them there. This is how the selected clip, in this case our logo, blends with what's behind it. So there's a bunch of options here. If I wanted to, I could say subtract, for example, and then you'll see some colors get subtracted out, like the black background there does, but then it messes up the entire logo. It doesn't look the way we want it to. So when you're dealing with effects and doing some other work, you might want to use that blend mode. But in our case, what we want to do is just remove the black background and keep our, our logo there. So if we go down, there's a couple stencil and silhouette options here that you can play with. Uh, the stencil ones are kind of cool to use your image as an actual stencil. So in this case, it's the alpha, which there's no alpha, but we have some Luma. So now we're creating a stencil to what's behind there in our background. So cool effects there, but in our case, we want to silhouette our, our foreground here. So we don't have an alpha channel, so if we do alpha, the entire thing turns black. But if we go down to Luma, it's looking at the luminance for that file. And if your logo is just a black and white uh, picture like the black background with white text, for example, this actually might work really well to silhouette just that text. But in our case, this logo is actually colored. So it does remove the black background, but kind of messes up the rest of the logo. So not exactly what I want here. Now you can definitely go through and try some of these other blend modes and you might get one that gets kind of close to what you want and it works pretty well. And if that's the case, awesome, go for it. But in my case, with my logo here, I don't, I don't like the way the blend modes are working. So I'm gonna try something else. And in this case, I'm gonna try using a keyer. If you think of chroma key with green screens, uh, if you watch the weather person on, just, you know, they, they're up there in front of a background and they're pointing out the maps and different things. Well, they've done that because they have a green screen behind them and that green screen is replacing whatever's supposed to be there. And that's uh, done with a key. They're keying out that color. So if you go into your effects browser, the, uh, there's a bunch of different effects in here. And if you look on the left column, there's going to be an option for keying. And by default, there's only two keyers in here. There's the standard keyer, which is great for removing color. But then there's a luma keyer, which is great for taking out luminance or really light. So either black, white, or shades in between. So that's what our, our luma keyer is going to be. So I'm just going to drag this onto the logo file. And you'll see... Just by doing that, it actually kind of does an okay job, right? It removes the black there, but it really is impacting my uh, logo in the background here. So you can go over into the effects brow uh, the inspector, the effect inspector here, and adjust this Luma uh, keyer, right? So just dragging this top spot, you can see how dragging that to the left, all of a sudden I get all my color back, bunch of the shades. If I go all the way over, then all of a sudden the black background comes back. But we just want just that little part being keyed out. So I can go and do that. And there's a bunch of tools in this key here. I'm not going to go into too much detail with them, but definitely go in here. You can really maximize the way this works. But these views are helpful because on the left, we're seeing the composite, which just means the final version. But if I click the middle, I can see the actual mat, which is what's being taken out and what's remaining. So the black area is what's being removed. And then the white area, that's what's remaining. So this actually looks pretty good. If I go over to the right side, I can see the original picture. Now, if we go to the middle here, I'm going to adjust my little slider back to the right here. You can see how the logo is not solid white anymore. There's some, because uh, I'm kind of some gray areas here. So that would help me here by seeing this matte to know I should keep going to the left here until it's almost solid white, if not solid. But I don't want the background to be faded. The background should still be a good uh, black there. So. Uh, that looks pretty good, and I'll go to my composite. There it is. Looks awesome. I can then use my video inspector here. I'll hide the keyer. I can scale this down, and then go and put this into the corner. Looks great. I like it. Um, that's pretty much all you'd have to do. Now, in addition to those tools, the keyer might work pretty well for, for many of you, especially if you have a solid background there. In some cases, though, you might be working with a logo that is on a wild background, and you don't have it cut out on its own thing. So you're trying to make it work. And that's where the mask is going to come in. So in same thing in your effects browser, just like the keyer, you have this mask section. And you can mess around with some of these masks. But if you want the most control, I find the draw mask 
uh, effect is great. So since the logo is selected over here, I can just double click on the effect and that'll apply the draw mask. And then the way the mask works is you actually just click on your image in the, the viewer here. So we have this little tool activated. I can actually just click to start creating points. Now I'm having an issue here because the transform tool is still active. So I'm gonna hit done to exit out of that transform tool. But now I can actually go and just click on my image here and I'm adding points. And I can even click and drag to add a rounded point. And I could just click around this logo. I'm not gonna do it too detailedly here, but I can click around this logo to create a mask around it. And then I can go and maybe wanna feather the edges just to bring it in. And now I've created a mask around that logo to remove whatever background is behind it. In this case, it was just black, so I might wanna use the key or, or blend mode, but you don't have to have any of that. You could have just the logo and you can use these masks and this draw mask effect to crop it out and get in close. Just understand that working with this mask, you are going to want to spend a lot of time to get this accurate. You're going to want to go into your zoom here and go into 400 or 600 percent, navigate around to get in really close to these different points, especially if you don't want to use the feather. You can then do this to, to really get right on the edges and edit all these points. You can hold down option to add in additional points if you need to. And you can also right click on any of these points to change them from a linear just straight line between those points or smooth it out to have these Bezier handles to be able to round the edges. Again, that's a lot more work to use those masks, but can really make your logo stand out, especially if you don't have a transparent file, this can really help. Now, one last trick, because you have these tools, you have Mac OS, it's a great operating system. There's a lot of things that you get for free. So let me go outside of Final Cut. I'm actually gonna minimize this. Go back to our logo file. Let's say we do have this JPEG file and I'm just gonna double click on it and that opens it up into preview. If it doesn't do that for you, you can also right click on the file, say open with, and then choose preview from the list. It might be opening up into Photoshop or another file. But if you go into preview, preview lets us see really clearly that this is not a transparent file. It's got this black background. If I double click on my transparent one, we notice in preview, let me shrink it down so we can see them side by side. It's got just this uh, kind of almost pure white background behind it. So that lets me know it is a transparent file. I can shrink it way down. Whereas this one, no matter how I adjust it, you can see that black background still there, right? So if this is the case, I like to go into, pre, uh, into pages. So if I've seen it in preview, I'm gonna open up pages, which again, if you're new to Mac OS, if you have a new Mac, you get this for free. It's included with the Mac and it's just a word processing application and page layout, page design. But you can actually go in and just drag in your image file, which again, in this case is a JPEG image. And with it selected, I'm gonna go to the image tab over here, which is under the format uh, button. If you don't see that, just click format, you'll see image. And there's an option here for instant alpha. And like the little tool tips that says there, it makes part of the image transparent. So I can actually click on this and then just click and drag across my, the black area to make it transparent. The further I drag out, the more things it's making transparent. So in this case, I'm doing it with black. So even almost at 0%, it, it does a pretty good job in removing that. But you can click and drag this out further if you need to. You can even use that. Uh, to make other things transparent. So if you have maybe a person standing on a background and you wanna just call out that person, you can go through and use this instant alpha, do it multiple times to take out each of those sections. So as an example, if I wanted to seal out some of this uh, clapboard here, I could just click and drag and notice the light blue areas. It's actually removing all of those spots as I click and drag across it. Don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna do command Z a couple times to go back here. But then with my background uh, removed, I'm just gonna hit done to save that in there. And notice now I have this transparent uh, logo here. Pretty cool. I'm gonna hit Command C to copy that logo. I'm gonna use Command Spacebar, type in preview to open preview. And in preview, I'm gonna go up to the file menu and say new from clipboard. What that means is the clipboard is where you copy stuff. So if I do new from clipboard, notice we have a new document here with the logo that is transparent and I can just go up to file and save this file and I'm, I'm creating a new logo file like I have on the desktop back here with this logo so I'm going to use Final Cut Pro help 
logo. And that should be all I need to do there. And the, the important thing when you're saving this file, and I mentioned it earlier when you're dealing with Photoshop or any of these apps, but the key is you want to make sure that alpha is enabled. So some of these formats, if I choose JPEG, for example, I don't get an option to enable this uh, alpha channel, which then I'll just have a black background, defeats the whole point of all this. So you want to choose a format that gives you the option to enable alpha, like a TIFF file or a PNG. Make sure that you have the option to enable an alpha channel to, to get that transparency. And I'm going to save this onto the desktop, hit save. Let's close out a preview, close out a pages. I don't need to save that. I could delete that file. I'm going to go back into Final Cut. I'm going to drag in my new logo here, which is on the desktop that we just created. And notice now it does have the transparent background in it. I can just scale this down and move it over, put it wherever I need. It's ready to go. I can even mess with the opacity. Uh, you could still do a blend mode too if you wanted to blend that in the background. But now I have my logo back there. Looks great. And the big benefit, why you should take the, the couple extra minutes there to go into pages and preview and remove that background, is that the logo is ready to go. So you could use this across multiple projects, move it between libraries, wherever you want to go, and it's ready. The blend mode is great. Using a keyer is great. But it, you don't want to do that every single time you have to work with a file, especially if you're going to be using this on multiple projects. So if that's the case, try to get that alpha channel. And if you can, from the original designers of the logo, if you're using Photoshop, go in and do that. If not, use this trick. Go into Pages uh, and Preview and, and use those tools that you have uh, to remove that background and get yourself a transparent file. There are probably other tips out there and other tricks that you can use. This is the way that I do it. If you have a better way to do it or have any feedback, put it down in the comments below this video. Always appreciate that. If you have another question that you want answered, just send an email to finalcutprohelp at me.com and make sure to subscribe. We do a live show and we have a bunch of those you can watch right now on replay. We like to answer all kinds of weird questions through there and don't hesitate, reach out. We're here to help anytime at Final Cut Pro Help on Instagram, Twitter, all the good stuff. All right, have a great day, everyone.